corner assigned to case number 592012CF0010838. I pull the sheet from over his head. His hands are rough, still dressed in that same black hoodie, not sure if it's darker from his blood or if the night is still clinging to his skin. One bullet wound to the abdomen. He is very young, he still smells of cheap cologne. I wonder if his mother knows. He was tired, the bags under his eyes, the small curl of his lips, his hair unkept. Or maybe it was just uncared for, or maybe it was from the hood of his jacket rummaging through his thoughts. I wonder what he was thinking about. Did he know there would be marches? Did he know there would be riots? Did he know there would be movements? It's late. I grab the bottom of his jaw, I yawn, his teeth clean, his gums black, his mouth dry, it's late. I sip my coffee, trying to stay awake. Eyes peeled back open, his pupils are dilated. He still looks scared like he's surprised to see me, another white man, this close, this personal. I've never felt a stare dig so deep. I examine the shirt. It was stretched at the collar and he was pinned down. One hole in the jacket, one hole in the shirt, one hole in one family. It's about time we stand up. Stand up. Excuse me, Mrs. Martin, could you please stand up and come with us? She sits behind glass as I pull the sheet from over his head once again. This time it pains me. Her hands are pressed to the glass, tears streaming across her skin. She clings to her face. I nod. Feel a tear slip from the corner of my eye, roll off my cheek, and graze his fingertips. I pull the sheet over Trayvon's face one last time, and I stand up. It's time we stand up.